Adventures of Sonic Episode 13, Best Hedgehog. We start out with me being reminded of Robotropolis in Sad AM because we see a statue of Robotnik and then Robot Guards with Sonic sneaking past them. Sonic says that a guy's been locked up in Robotnik's fortress for 30 years and needs rescuing. How'd they find out about him? They find a guy named Lucas, but since he's just a bunch of hair, he reminds me of It from The Addams Family, only better because he can talk. A guard robot goes after Sonic, and he reflects his laser back at him with his handheld mirror, so his vanity came in handy. I love that there's robots other than Scratch and Grounder and Coconut used for once. And Sonic's arrogance was a problem for him because he needed Lucas to pull him away from a robot to save him, because he spent so long standing there bragging. They eventually get away from the robots, with Sonic taunting the broken one with the disguise he shouldn't have. Robotnik sees this on camera footage, and Sonic gets a spring from a grandfather clock to reflect the thing dropped towards them back at the ceiling. Okay, I appreciate getting to see where he got his materials from for a change, but why was that grandfather clock even there? Then Sonic's in another disguise as a chef. How to get not only that disguise, but the materials to put Eggman in a giant frying pan. This isn't funny to me because it doesn't make any sense. Sonic asks Lucas why Robotnik hates him, and he says that it's all about a beautiful woman named Lucinda. Apparently, this it creature was actually a human. I hope it's explained that Robotnik transformed him into that thing, because there's no way human hair would grow like that. It turns out that Lucinda was a girl Robotnik wanted to be with, but she got mad at Robotnik because he sent a snake after Lucas for dating her. So apparently Robotnik had creepy cyborg eyes even as a nerdy teenager. And he got expelled for what he did as actual consequences for it, and that was when he became a supervillain. Sonic wants to go find Lucinda because if she stood up to Robotnik for him, she must have really loved Lucas. Lucas insults himself as a walking haystack, but that just makes me wonder why nobody will shave him. That's such a weird thing to say. Robotnik has a flashback that shows himself as dating Lucinda and her being in love with him and not wanting Lucas to flirt with her. So why didn't Robotnik find Lucinda and make a machine to brainwash her? I guess she's dead or he's too stupid to think of that idea. But if he could make a mind control machine for controlling a giant gorilla, he should have made one for Lucinda too. Wait, why doesn't he just use those golden brainwashing headbands on everyone on Mobius and send robots to put them on their heads? He clearly has robots other than Scratch and Grounder, who are so incompetent that Grounder tells Sonic how he'll go into a trap, and then actually goes into the trap himself to demonstrate it to him. No one would, would, no one would do that! Grounder is brought into a deep hole by the rope, Sonic actually calls him Scumbot, which is oddly hateful of him. See ya, Scumbot! And for some reason, Sonic doesn't bury him in that hole with a spin dash. Sonic then ties up Grounder and Scratch and sends them off a cliff with a boulder. So how did Grounder get out of that hole? Oh right, Scratch has extendable arms. He's so useless that I forgot about one of his major abilities. For some reason, these robots aren't hurt from that, and Sonic tricks one of them into telling him where to find Lucina. She's a school teacher for toddlers. Why is it that nobody thought to shave Lucas? She's not gonna love him after she sees him, she's gonna panic at seeing him and call him a monster. Unless the show will have bad writing. Sonic took Lucas all over the world without shaving him with the sharp spines. Why? The minute he calls up to Lucinda, a bag is put over him and he's captured by a scratch. Sonic shouldn't have left him alone. The fourth wall is broken for the first time in the show, thankfully this is very rare, and Sonic goes after Lucas. Lucas manages to get his feet out from below the bag, but he can't run away because of a claw on the eggmobile. Why have this happen if he's going to be kidnapped anyways? Robotnik says that Sonic's doing exactly what he wants, following some footprints into a cave. A minute, you'll be roasting head. He plans to blow up the cave with TNT, but Sonic's somehow fine, probably because he was running fast enough to avoid the explosion. With rumbling happening, Tails warns Sonic the volcano exploded, and Sonic gets Lucas out of the cave. 
Robotnik gets hope because there's a picture of him in Lucinda's classroom. When Scratch said this I gotta see, it made me wish that he was sarcastic about Eggman more often to set himself apart with a personality more. But without Eggman being there to hear his snarking obviously, because if he was snarking at Eggman all the time, I just wonder even more why it wasn't scrapped. Sonic somehow manages to float on lava on is that an ice cube or foam? Either way, that was insultingly stupid. I'm not even gonna Well, I am mentioning the fact that the convection for the lava should have killed him. Do we really need to have this? Couldn't he have just spun dashed through the ceiling and escape the lava that way? Lucas actually wonders if Lucinda will marry Robotnik. Granted, he is rich and powerful, as he says, but you know what could be that insignificant? Sonic finally gets the idea to take care of his bad hair. Robotnik wonders what he'll say to Lucinda, and he fortunately realizes that he would have sounded like a groveling worm with his first planned speech, only to decide that him being commanding was fine. This is so insulting. Robotnik actually believes that Sonic is Lucinda. Even though she looks even though he looks and sounds almost nothing like her. Sonic has blue fur clearly visible here. It's characteristic of Robotnik to say of course she does at the wedding vows. But Sonic shouldn't have made it far enough to send rice and cake at Robotnik at the wedding. This is just a blatant ripoff of when Bugs Bunny married Elmer Fudd in a disguise, and it doesn't work for Sonic. It, it, it worked It worked better when Bugs Bunny did it because they kept running off screen and the back on screen and then eventually there was a big twist. It would have been a little better if, if Sonic was dressed in a rubber Lucinda lookalike suit. But even then that would be stupid because Robotnik would see that the mouth wasn't moving beneath the suit and recognize it wasn't her voice at all. Sonic spin dashes to roll away the villains in the red carpet. Granted, I enjoyed seeing the scene, but it was so stupid that Sonic even got to this point. It would have worked if Tails was an engineer who made a device that would make anybody see him as Lucinda. Tails tells Lucas that he looks hot after having returned him back to his normal sympathetic looking self. Sonic throws Lucas at Lucinda, well something like that, and Lucas proposes to her. I'm not sure if that's unrealistic or not for her to say yes right away after she just got him back. She was clearly in love with him all that time, missing him, but still. The story ends with Sonic being the best man, or best hedgehog, hence the episode title. I was thinking it'd be a story where Sonic was awarded a best hedgehog award and it'd be a trap. And Sonic says, Sonic says he loves reading and promotes it, even though that's uncharacteristic of him since he's someone who hates waiting and sitting around. It's like, does it have to be Sonic saying the Sonic says message every time? I know it's called that, but sometimes it doesn't make any sense for him to be giving that message. It seems very hypocritical of him. Though the message is good about getting help with reading if you aren't good at it, but it should be Tails giving out this message. Instead, what's Tails good for? What does Nisha to show? He barely ever has sweet moments with Sonic as a little brother where Sonic shows him affection. He's just some kid who stands around and does nothing. I like this episode. I was surprised that I was supposed to believe this cousin Ick guy was actually a human though. Who was trapped in Robotnik's fortress being kept alive for 30 years for wooing a girl Robotnik liked. How did Sonic even find out about him to go rescue him anyways? The beginning of the episode reminded me of Sad M with Sonic sneaking around Robot X Fortress past guards. And it made me wish the show was like that instead of constant repetition with Sonic fooling Scratch with disguises. Though I did see signs of the show growing from that scene, because we saw robots other than Scratch Grounder and Coconuts being used. And Sonic showed that he was supposed to be flawed because his arrogance almost got him in trouble and Lucas had to save him. Sadie M goes way too far in the other direction, making him so flawed that it's just ridiculous. But here, th they could do it well. I like that Lucas was a sympathetic nerd in the flashback. But it sucks that it took forever for Sonic to get the common sense idea to shave him. Lucinda obviously wouldn't want to see him like that. Would she even believe it was him? And so far, I think we might have seen more human civilian villagers than Mobians. Well, I didn't bother to count them all, but still, there's more humans than I expected. 
And whenever there's Mobians, they make a point of stereotyping them depending on the species and showing that species all group together as one group. It's unique for the show, at least. And it was interesting seeing how Robotnik would act with the girl he likes. And how, realistically, she wants nothing to do with him. But I suppose if there's someone as evil as Robotnik in the show, it would be interesting if he had a wife and she liked him because she was as evil as him, but someone as evil as Robotnik would just kick him out and want all the power for himself. I guess he'd have to make an android.